And business correspondent Tulula Kwegujobi had an exclusive interview with the chief executive officer of the Asso Association of Certified Chartered Accountants, Helen and the financial controller, TVC Communications, Victoria Ajayi, on the role of this critical institution to the economy. All right, thank you very much for joining us on this segment of the show. And I have with me, well, Helen Brand, OBE. She's the Chief Executive Officer of the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, that's ACCA. And also I have with me here the financial controller, TVC Communications, Victoria Ajayi, FCCA. Uh, joining me to discuss more about the ACCA and why the CEO is in Lagos. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to be here, thank you. I I'm going to start with you, Helen. Mm -hmm. Why are you in Nigeria? Well, Nigeria is a very important global economy, as we all know, and Nigeria is very important to ACCA as part of our global family of members, students and stakeholders. So. As the global CEO, it's very important that I connect with all our stakeholders in the market and really understand what it is that ACCA can do to contribute to the profession here and contribute to economic development. Talking about ACCA now, in strict terms, let's look at the impact on accounting profession. Mm. Tell us some of what you think you've, can I say achievements, or what you've, um, the objectives and what you've achieved so far. Okay. So ACCA is a global body for professional accountants. We have 200,000 members worldwide mm -hmm. and 486,000 students at various stages uh, of qualification. Our mission is to deliver public value and by that we mean acting in the public interest, driving ethical business practices and uh, supporting sustainable economic growth. And if as a profession we can do all of that, then we really are delivering uh, public value. Very importantly, of course, um, is, de is developing the capacity, um, professional capacity in the world. So we educate, train and regulate members of the profession. And we also conduct a huge amount of research uh, to provide the insight to policymakers and others as to how they can strengthen the regulatory frameworks for business and the profession, how they can strengthen talent management, how we can drive successful business development in the decades ahead. Okay, uh, before I come back to you, now let me ask Victoria what, 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 one question. No, tell us, why did you choose ACCA, um, you know, instead of other accounting profession, uh, professional bodies, you know, out there? Um, it's an interesting question. It was a no-brainer for me, actually. <laughs> um, I had uh, the options of about four professional accountancy bodies. But after doing some research, um, I decided to go for ACCA for the following reasons. One, it's a, a global professional body. It's, it has, it's highly respected and it has um, such, it de delivers such high quality value to its members and to students. So I thought I wanted something that was um, truly wide reaching. I wanted something that would give me a global passport. I didn't want to be restricted. I wanted to be able to work anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what ACCA offered. It's, it's truly a glo global village, and I really wanted something that had that reach. Um, so it was, it was a top choice for me. Aside that, ACCA is premised on um, three, three values. A lot of other accountancy professions focus on the exams. If you notice, people say, oh, we're writing exams. Oh, we, and as soon as they finish the exams, it dies down. But with ACCA, there's a lot of focus on not just the exams, but experience. We have the professional um, ex um, experience requirement, uh, the, P the PR that's required for you to become a member. So even if you finish your exams, you've got to have certain level of experience before you become a member. And also ethics. So it's exams, experience, and ethics. And that's very critical for me. Integrity is key for me as, a, as an accountant. Very good one. Ethics and professionalism. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm going to go to now. Now, tell us how this has actually helped the financial profession. Talking about good ethics and professionalism mm -hmm. with regards to ACCA too. Tell us. Well, ethics lies at the very heart of being a professional accountant. I guess it's what distinguishes you through, from having a diploma mm -hmm. or an academic qualification with being a professional. As a professional, you sign up to a code of conduct, uh, to a code of ethics, which you abide to for your entire career. So. Um, we monitor, as ACCA, we monitor the conduct of our members against that code of ethics. And should uh, a member of the public, an employer, a government complain about our member, we will investigate and ultimately and go through a disciplinary process. And ultimately, if found proven, 
that member can be removed from the register, which is a very big sanction. You know, it's, it's really affecting the livelihood of that person, but it is ensuring that adherence to the code of ethics. So incredibly important part of the profession because the public has to trust professional accountants, uh, trust them to be the guardians of good ethical practice in business. So it's not just about what you do, it's about how you do it. And I've quite often heard the CFO referred to as the ethical guardian of a business. Uh, they really have to be ensuring that good corporate governance, good ethical behaviours are prevalent uh, throughout the organisation. So it's a fantastic role. It's one I think the public wants to see more and more. They want to be able to trust business. They want to be able to trust institutions. And of course our members work in all sectors. They work in the corporate sector, the public sector in, in practice. And it's very important that the public knows that they can rely on those fully qualified professional accountants. In, indeed, still talking ethics now, it brings me to the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria, talking about corruption and, you know, uh, many people believe accountants just handle money. Yes, I know accountants can work somewhere else to not all, all the banks and banks and banks. But how do you think good ethics can help address corruption, which is prevalent in Nigeria? Yes, um, well, ethics is a personal issue. <laughs> Mm. So, um, at the end of the day, individuals can make a huge difference mm. to the way in which institutions mm. operate and run. So you can have the best processes in the world, the best systems in the world. If the individuals in there don't behave ethically, it won't matter, it won't, it won't, it won't happen. So I think it's incredibly important that, and, and I know that this puts uh, professional accountants under pressure every day, because they have to um, have the strength to do the right thing in circumstances that can be really challenging. But the point of being part of a profession is you have a network of fellow professional accountants there to support you. You have your institution there to advise you and support you and to guide you through ethical dilemmas. ACCA has just introduced um, a new ethics and professional skills module, which is a digital interactive module, okay. which tests the individual with real life ethical dilemmas and says, what would you do? So we're constantly testing and developing our members' minds to be able to cope with those situations. Mm. So it, progress will be made. We just issued a, a report uh, around the shadow economy, looking at the global shadow economy. We also looked at Nigeria. We, we, un, we estimate, well, the, the report estimates around 48% of GDP okay. is in the shadow economy in Nigeria. Mm. But we do predict by 2025 that will reduce uh, and to, to around 45%. Right. So things are going in the right direction, but there's still, still a lot of progress to be made. A lot still needs to be done. Well, my next question goes to Victoria now, uh, and I want to say the way it is here. With the growing interest in African intelligence, a number of jobs are now being taken over, particularly accounting by robots and, uh, and all of that. How do you feel as a finance professional looking at all of this? <laughs> Okay, um, I have read a number of articles um, that have been put out there that would say, you know, top 10 jobs or top 10 professions that are likely to be taken over by robots. And then you'd see accounting and you see auditing. And I smile because honestly, the response to that is I'll tell the robots to bring it on. Um, because, you know, the fact is that repetitive tasks or repetitive duties or routine type of duties. Um, are threatened by um, ro robots and in fact we had uh, the opportunity to play around with some of these robots at the last Africa members convention mm -hmm. in Addis Ababa and a lot of accountants it was really on their minds and we decided to question one of these robots I think it was Peggy the accounting robot so we said to the accountant and just asked it a question that was non-accounting related and the response from the robot was I'm sorry I don't understand your question so it, it, I mean, it, it lets you know that um, in as much as the robots are there, they're there to complement the work. We can leave the number crunch into the robots whilst the accountants focus on strategic thinking. Accountants will become um, business advisors and business partnering. You can never take that away and the robots will not do the thinking for you. So human accountants will always be needed. It's not, I don't see it as a threat, really. It's, 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 it's more of complementary. They're there to do all the routine work whilst we do the value-added things that people really need. So it's mm. an exciting time. Indeed, value addition, very, mm -hmm. very, very important. Then on the subject of social mobility, mm. uh, let, let's look at that. What has the accounting profession done to promote or let's say improve, you know, attract more talent to For this sure. profession? 
Well, ACCA was actually founded on the uh, values of opportunity and diversity. At that time, actually in 1904. Um, it 103 years or so, 104 years? Yeah. You're more, more, more than more, that. More than that. <laughs> <laughs> A long time ago. Um, <laughs> the the profession was closed unless you were wealthy, effectively. So ACCA said if you had talent and ability, you should have the opportunity uh, to enter the profession. So that's always been our driving uh, force. The way that the ACCA qualification is structured, there are many entry points. So you could be a school leaver, you could have a different kind of diploma or qualification. You, many hold a degree, uh, but you would come at a different stage of the qualification and then what comes out the other end, however you start, is the same quality, the same high standard, uh, the same uh, certification at the end of it. So that g provides a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. uh, for people to join the profession. But our latest prof um, report on social mobility does say that we need to do even more as a profession, as a whole, to first of all promote the profession to young people, to young talent, so that they realise it's there as an opportunity. It's not always top of the list yeah. of what young people are thinking about, but yeah. as the foundation for a career in any business, um, a professional accountancy qualification such as ACCA is fantastic and provides uh, a pathway to so many opportunities. So we need to get that message out through schools. Age 13, 14 now, young people are deciding the path they want to take. And this gives them a, we can start then with very basic education in financial literacy uh, and to expand that pool of talent that is coming into the profession. All right, finally, for, for, for you now, emerging technology trends now, mm. let's look at it. Now, how would you say accountants are really prepared for, um, let's say, technological advancements, how we're going digital and all of that? Are accountants really prepared, let me say, ACCA members, <laughs> are they prepared for? Yeah. for this advancement. We, we did a, a big piece of work a couple of years ago okay. called Professional Accountants, the Future. Okay. And we were looking at what we call the quotients for success, the seven quotients. And okay. one very key one there is the digital quotient. Okay. So we're training our members uh, to be uh, happy and be able to use that digital technology. But we're also um, training our students. So we're making sure that they are work ready through using digital applications. For example, our examinations now are being moved to computer-based examinations. And that's not what might come into your mind from years ago, multiple quest choice questions. They're actually filling in spreadsheets in the examinations. So instead of writing about a spreadsheet, you're actually performing on a sp spreadsheet. And this makes you work ready. Yes. So absolutely, that digital future, um, it, you know, it, it's key to everything that we have in our lives and the profession no less and we have to embrace it and we have to uh, be embedded in it so that we can add the value. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, uh, for, before, I, before I round this up, Victoria, now as a fellow, what's your advice to prospective accountants and also members? I would, should I say just in Nigeria? Okay, in Nigeria. Tell us, what's your <laughs> advice to them? Because I wanted to say, okay. even across the world. Okay. Um, <laughs> for students, I think um, the advice out out there is the world is you know is, is their oyster yeah. um, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities out there um, in the accountancy profession um, those who are students right now may be thinking should I or should I not I would say go for it the reason I say that is because um, in every organization they always need a money's person <laughs> they need the person who will keep the money and accountancy has different specialties so you choose to do different things audit tax consultancy business advisory so there's a lot of opportunities there's also the fact that you can work in different industries you know nigeria a lot of people are big on oil and gas um, some people want to do health sector some want to do pharmaceuticals or manufacturing you would always need a finance person in all of those uh, sectors so you have a wide range um, as an accountant, you could work in different industries and you could specialize in different things. So the world is really there um, at your oyster. And in addition to, to what Helen had mentioned um, in terms of preparing um, accountants uh, for the future and this big research ACCA has done, um, the, 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 the quotients um, that, were, that, were, that they came up with in that report are really, really important. Um, I would humbly um, advice because you had asked for advice for students yeah. and members yeah. Yeah. Uh, my humble opinion to members will be to look up that report because it's on everyone's minds artificial intelligence digital age all of that and they're wondering what skills do I need 
Now, those seven skills are very important. On the ACCA's website, you even have a skills test. So you can check yourself to see where there's a gap in all of those seven quotients. Um, one of the quotients, you had mentioned the digital quotient. One of them is vision quotient. So you just know that not, the accountants um, of the future are not just about numbers. They're not just number crunchers. The vision quotient, for instance, um, speaks to the ability to think innovatively. It speaks to the ability to be able to predict um, uh, future trends accurately. So these are the type of skills we're asking accountants to develop. Um, people uh, don't, uh, or the way I'll put it is people are um, excited by v vision and not numbers. You can reel out numbers, but it doesn't excite people. Vision is very important. And one of the um, most interesting or most liked speeches of our time um, for Martin Luther King is he said, I have a dream. That speaks to vision. So accountants are, are being told that these are the skills you need. It's not just about number crunching, it's about vision, it's about creativity, it's digital. You know, it's emotional intelligence, intelligence, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm very interested in emotional uh, 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 intelligence. <laughs> I, I, I know you're going to have a parting one. You have something to say, I saw you nodding. What's your final <laughs> word? Let me let you say that. Let me give it Well, to. I really believe that professional accountants are the business leaders yes. of today and the business leaders of the future and the way that we are equipping them with this wide range of skills, vision, emotional intelligence, creativity. I think there's a lot of hope for them supporting the Nigerian economy and the economy worldwide. Indeed, you've heard it from them, the Chief Executive Officer of ACCA, Helen Brand, OBE, and mm. also the uh, Financial Controller, TDC Communications, Victoria Ajayi, giving insights into activities of the ACCA and, you know, telling us what to expect, projections, what accountants can do, and all of that. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the show. I must really appreciate you. you. Well, that's it for this segment. I'm Tulu Lokbe Ogunjobi.